Good morning, Mandela. How are we doing this fine morning? Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, CAD Basics 03. This is our third assignment here, and I've uh, hopped over. I am in the basics. Let's go number three. This one's called the Throwing Star. Notice that in here you've actually got some access to some tutorials from my CAD site, which are fantastic resources. But if you're here, you're probably looking for a specific resource right now. And that resource is to look at how to do this drawing, the CAD Basics 03, the Throwing Star. And we're going to go through all of the things that you need to know to make this drawing in AutoCAD Web App, including a couple modifications, because the web app doesn't do everything you're supposed to in the desktop version, and that is what it is. In the pre-2019 assignments, I've got a version of the Throwing Star. It's actually the example I'm going to use in this particular drawing. Uh, it has all of the same tools that the regular one would do. It just has all different numbers. It just puts them in slightly different places. So let's go ahead and talk about this one, and let's hop our way over to the web app and make this happen. Now, with that being said, uh, let's go over to the web app. I've already logged in here. I'm in my test folder, and I'm going to create a new drawing. Call it CAD Basics 03, Throwing Star, and uh, life is good. Let's get to it. Now, we'll notice in the Throwing Star a few things that you need to know. All right, everything starts at 5, 3.5, and that is unremarkable when you consider that that's the dead center of the 10 by 7 circle. So we're just going to make this thing centered. Okay, we have a radius 1 circle is the basis for this drawing. For all you who are doing the actual drawing, the uh, CAD Basics, the post-2019 version, uh, the radius is also 1. It actually starts with the same circle. There's just a whole lot less of it available for you to access. Okay. We're going to be drawing this triangle up on the top here, the one that is highlighted in dashed green, and then we are going to be cutting it up with some circles at the bunch of the midpoints. So we're going to make sure our midline snaps are on. So let's hop over and let's actually make this thing happen. First thing I'm going to do in my drawing is I am going to create some new layers. In this case, I'm going to have a drawing layer. In this case, I'm going to have a dimensioning layer. And in this drawing, I'm actually going to have what's called a hidden layer too, because I have that dashed green line I have to draw. In this case, I'm going to make the hidden layer yellow, the drawing layer is going to be blue. Oh, excuse me. Uh, and the dimensioning layer is going to be bright green. Those are all just bright colors so that you can see them, so that you can see what we're doing with them. Let's get started. Um, I'm going to go to my properties first. I'm actually going to change a couple things. My dim style, I'm going to make sure it's standard, just so we can put the dimensions on this thing properly. I'm going to go back to my layers. I'm going to start my drawing, and we're going to get started with this. First things first, a rectangle starting at 0, 0, and going to 10, 7. That's 10 tab 7, by the way, in the AutoCAD web app, which is kind of weird. You'll notice that I can't quite see it, but you'll also notice down here in my coordinate zone that I'm looking at a scale of thousands of units. So I'm just going to zoom extends this thing and come down into my uh, rectangle. Now when I start my circle, I might have an O snap for the uh, geometric center. Yes, I do. I have that set up from a previous drawing. That means life is good. Let's start with a circle. Hop to my geometric center. This circle has a radius of 1, and it's a good thing it's asking me for the radius. Life is good. Now let's break down this first triangle. Okay, this first triangle starts at the midpoint. It jumps up 3 units. I get that because I have 2 units here and a radius of 1 here, and then it's going to jump downwards at a 25 degree angle to vertical, and that's important, to vertical, 1 unit. All these TYPs, these simply mean that these measurements are typical to the rest of the drawing. Everything here is symmetrical. That's kind of how we make this thing work. So let's actually draw this thing. Uh, so we got uh, three units up, down at a 25 degree angle, and uh, back down to center. So let's draw this this uh, triangle right now. Hmm, line tool, start in the middle. Okay, obviously we have one up to the top, and then we're going to go up another two from there, so we're going to go three total. I'm just going to draw the line out that way. Now you'll notice that zero degrees is horizontal, and 90 degrees is vertical. And if I want 25 degrees from vertical, I actually have to do a little bit of math here. I actually want this to be one unit long. We know that from the drawing. That's easy enough to lock in with a one tab. And then uh, I'm actually make this 65 degrees because 65 degrees is 90 minus 25. And that's going to give us our actual line, our actual angle. And we're going to be able to finish off that triangle. That triangle matches this triangle perfectly. Now, uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add three circles under here. The circles are 0.1, 0.25 and 0.1. The 0.1s are both at midpoints, and the 0.25 is right on the end of this, uh, the intersection of these two lines. So let's go ahead and draw those guys. And they are radiuses, if I remember correctly, 0 0.25. Let me confirm that in the drawing. Yep, they are all radiuses. Good. 
and then we're going to put the other ones and I'm going to snap to midpoint. If you don't have your midpoint snaps on, please fix the job or fix the problem. And you'll notice that this last one, and this is the same in all the versions of this drawing, this circle actually overlaps the circle in the middle and that's on purpose. If you uh, delete this line or you trim this line before, the midpoint ends up out here, the circle ends up out here, and it's very clearly obvious that you didn't follow the instructions very well. That being said, from here I'm going to use a trim tool, enter, enter, and I'm just going to get rid of some of these pieces. Just make the parts that I don't need to use go away. Okay, zoom in here, trim, trim. I can't trim this last line. Oh, I can trim this last line in the web app. In normal AutoCAD you can't actually do that because it doesn't intersect with anything. But because it does in this one, we're going to make sure our first object here, this triangle, is perfect. And it is right now. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a bit of a select for all of this and I'm going to make my life easier by typing in group and just grouping this together. Now I can handle this as a single object which is hugely useful. Okay, If I want to ungroup it I can actually type the ungroup command and that works pretty well too. Okay, From here I've got this object Now I have two options here. I, I actually have the ability to rotate this if I just type in and use the rotate command. Uh, and that's going to allow me to actually spin this around and I actually have the ability to use as a reference object. That's one way to do this and it's slow and it's cumbersome. We're going to do the fast way to do this. We're going to select this and we're going to go array polar. Now your polar array by the way it does exist in here. I'm not sure if there's a hotkey for it actually. You only have an access to your uh, array here. If you click array you're given an option. Now. Rectangular arrays are where we'd want to use columns and rows, where we'd want to build a grid. Path arrays, if we want our objects to follow, usually a curved line of some sort. And a polar array, which is what we're doing today, is going to allow us to actually spin something around the, um, is going to allow us to spin something around a central axis. I'm going to back up a sec. I got some weirdness going on here. I'm going to click array. I'm going to select my objects. I'm going to press enter. Then I'm going to press polar array. And it's going to ask me to specify the center point of the array, which I know is the center of this circle. Okay, and now what's going to happen is it's going to actually array this around a bunch of times into this particular drawing. And now you'll know that I've got uh, my actual drawing here. I've got eight objects. I've got eight objects. Four, five, six, seven, yeah, eight objects. There we go. Okay, now it's going to look down here. It's going to ask me all of these inf pieces of information about this. I don't need to array the whole way around the circle. If I want to go like angle between or fill angle, I can make it go over 180 degrees. I have a lot of options here. Okay, In this case, I'm actually going to go ahead and change my items to 8. And that's going to give me the number that I need. Now again, there's a lot of options there that you can mess with. And I encourage people to actually go play with them. Because why wouldn't you? Okay, I'm going to trim away the parts of this I don't need. Because this drawing is almost done. It's going to actually uh, make us very happy to finish this one up. And then be able to do the dimensioning of it and finishing it up. I'm just going to trim away the parts I don't need in here and there we go there is the drawing portion of this particular drawing now let's fill in the actual uh, the actual dimensions on here because this is actually probably the tougher piece of all of this um, is the need to actually type in the dimensions okay for all of our uh, dimensions here we're going to just use the dim tool we're going to hop over to our dimensioning layer okay and we're going to go ahead and throw some dimensions on this thing okay so first of all we probably need to throw a radius on here so we're going to actually go with a uh, click a dimension here um, I'm going to see if I can throw a radius on right on this thing I may not be able to do dim rad dim ard oh radius one of the weirdest parts about AutoCAD some days is just uh, typing in things to make sure it works the way it's supposed to um, okay I guess I'm putting a radius on this way. That's very interesting. Select objects. Apologies, this is a dimensioning tool I've actually never used in this way. So that's very interesting. All right, well, I'm going to take a, another swing at this and make sure we get what we want. Our radius dimension is usually something that we are able to type in dim rad in uh, desktop AutoCAD or I'm seeing if there's a way to simply select this circle and go from there. I'm just going to hop over and I'm going to draw a full circle and see if it's 
related to the type of circle I have, but let's, there we go. Okay, this is actually gonna give us a, um, a diameter, which is interesting. Okay, I'm gonna cheat a little bit on this one. This one I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna redraw the circle so I get a full circle because for some reason, this isn't recognizing my trimmed up version as a, um, isn't recognizing my trimmed version as a proper circle. So I'm just simply gonna drop that in there and I'm gonna leave it right on the edge of that. Now that's giving me a dimension of a, right now of a, um, a diameter, but that'll work for right now. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, we're gonna turn around and we are gonna try to dimension the rest of our things because uh, obviously that caused us some, some issues there. So let's see, there we go. We can get a radius out of this one. We can clearly get a radius out of this one. Now, part of the weirdness that's going on here is perhaps ref referring to the fact that this is all grouped together. I may want to actually use an explode command here. I said it's called an explode command, excuse me. And an explode command will actually allow me to make it so that this is no longer a single object. Let's say for some reason I wanted to use specific pieces of this. I could actually go explode, and explode is gonna make it so that all the pieces of this object suddenly become selectable, okay? Now there's no really good way to go back on that to group them back up except to select them and press the group command, but it allows me to work with each individual piece of this drawing. I wonder if that'll actually fix my dimensioning issue from before. Let's find out. Yeah, well, look at that. We can now put that radius in properly without having to draw that cheater circle. Glad we learned something today. All right, so let's back off for a second. We got our radiuses in there. We have to add that TYP piece. So to do that, we're just gonna double click on these radiuses here and oh here we go i might have to go to my properties for this one and text overrule i'm just going to type in typ here and see if this adds it on like it's supposed to no it overrode it it added didn't add it that's unfortunate again differences between the desktop and the web app are quite uh, quite common here so i'm just going to override this text and go from here and again for this drawing this works for your typical drawing, it's probably not best practice, but that's okay. Uh, R 0 0.525 TYP. Okay. I'm just gonna use a quick text override on these and off we go. Ooh, did not save that because I did not press enter. That does happen sometimes. Right, press enter, life is good. Okay, um, the rest of the dimensions are relatively straightforward. I, I think you can figure them out if you've done anything with uh, the first few CAD assignments. I think we can just drop this one from here to the center point and life will be relatively good. Um, and the one thing I do want to talk about though is how to do the hidden line, which is one of the other new pieces to this particular drawing. And the hidden line is the part where we've actually put this kind of phantom triangle behind the other triangle. And in this case, it's just here to reference the uh, kind of the shape of the triangle. But in a typical drawing, a hidden line like that is gonna reference something that exists behind your current drawing. So to do that, we're gonna go to our layers and we're gonna go edit our hidden layer here, okay? We're actually gonna go over and I believe we can mess with our layer properties down here. We're actually gonna change this so that it is a hidden line, line type, and you'll notice that any line that I draw in this layer now is going to come off as a dashed line, which in this case is exactly what we want. So let's draw from the middle out, up to the top, and I can draw this. There's a couple different ways of finishing this drawing off. The most common I found is simply drawing the pieces that are visible. I think I may want to redraw this line just because of how it showed up. And then making sure that those lines appear behind the other lines in the drawing. So I'm going to click on this line here on this line here, a little bit of a shift action here, so we get all of them. And then uh, we're just simply going to right click them, we're gonna type in order, okay? And it's draw order is the command, and we're gonna send these to go under objects, okay? Select, select, and what do I need? Oh, do I have to hold shift? I have to hold shift, so I do. Okay, and then we're gonna press enter, and you'll notice that they're gonna go behind the should have gone behind the uh, oh select reference object okay just a sec it's asking me to select the object I actually want to put these underneath and I'm going to select this line right here 
press enter and you'll notice that those lines are now beneath or underneath those ones. Once you put your name on this, once you put the title on this, this project is done for all intents and purposes to show me that you understand how these pieces of CAD work. Uh, make sure you do export it as per most drawings where you're going to go to views, layout. You're going to go into your layout view and make sure that you've got some colors that we can actually see. I'm just going to fix this one up right here just so that we know what we're doing with it. Okay, make sure we have some layers and some colors that are actually visible. Once you've done all of that, you should be able to actually send this thing, uh, save it and then plot it to a PDF. Once you've done that and save the PDF up to uh, your uh, Dropbox, that'd be fantastic. You've got number three, all done. Cheers. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something from it. And as always, ask some good questions and uh, we'll get this sorted so that you all understand how to use these CAD pieces. Cheers.